and Benny Adams here with Hollywood Junket. And I am very thrilled to talk today to the one and only Mia Morris. She is so spectacular. I saw her audition. She is a one woman band. She does it all. She plays the drummer, she plays everything. Your daddy thinks I'm a loser. Cut. Cut. He likes his life of illusion. Cut. I got a bad reputation. Like the rest of my generation. And it's crazy. I can't wait to talk to you more about this. How's it going, Mia? It's good. Thank you for such a beautiful introduction. It's very oh. sweet. It's very <laughs> nice to meet you. You're very welcome. You deserve it. You deserve it. So I want to first start talking about looping. I have never heard of looping before. And I saw your audition. And I'm like, this is really cool. Like, this is something that I would listen to on the radio. How did you find out about looping? That's a really great question. And Looping has been uh, becoming more of a common thing that you'll see um, with either singer songwriters or multi instrumentalists on YouTube and live and stuff. And I wanted to use loop pedals because I wanted to incorporate more than one instrument into songs when I would play live just because it was entertaining and because I could so um, I, I play a show every Monday night at the listening room. It's called the Song Suffragettes, and I play originals there. And I also play percussion for all of the singer songwriters that join the round. And I really wanted to have percussion in my songs too, but I obviously can't play guitar with my hands and then percussion with my hands. So a loop pedal was just the perfect um, way to include everything that I wanted to hear. That's so cool. And how do you how do you prepare for these songs? Does it take a while to just get everything down? Like, I want to have this beat right here and I want to have this tone right here. How long does that take? It really, really depends on the song. I mean, sometimes I look at uh, my catalog and I'm like, which of these songs has um, the most simple um, and repeated progressions along with uh, drum beats that are similar throughout the song. I mean, it really, really depends on how much the song changes because some songs set up really well for looping if they're simple progression the whole time and similar things that are going on versus a song that is uh, that either has tempo changes or key changes or anything crazy like that. Um, so sometimes it can take a really long time, um, gone my way on America's Got Talent took me longer than usual because I decided to incorporate a bunch of instruments rather than just a couple, like I typically do. So that one took longer than usual, but that is just because of all the instruments that I wanted to use in it. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. And like <laughs> I said, your audition was amazing. It was freaking spectacular. Thank you. Before your audition, were you worried that the judges wouldn't want to, were you worried that they wouldn't, that you wouldn't have enough time to set everything up for your audition or for your actual song? Yeah. So the thing with, especially your first audition, um, they like it to be quick. A lot of people audition. So it's completely understandable that they're like, you know, 90 seconds to two minutes or something in that range. So I was worried that setting up the loop itself would take too long and they would get bored and be like, okay, you know, you've lost my attention. Um, we don't really care. We just want you to play the song. So that was probably the thing that I was worried about condensing the most so that I could just get into the song and, you know, do the fun part, the stick trick, all that stuff. Um, but it turned out well, so can't complain. It did. It did. I instantly I was hooked when I started hearing it. And so this is a this is an original song. How many original songs do you have and what are those songs about? That's a pretty loaded question because the messages in these songs are I mean, the range is ridiculous because everyone I feel like writes songs about whatever is going on either in their life or things that they imagine or create or whatever. 
Um, but I've written many, many, many songs. I have about 40 to 42 songs that are released, but that isn't even half of the hundreds of songs that I've written because I've learned that you have to write the bad songs to get the good ones. And I think most songwriters have also come to that conclusion along with a bunch of co-writes that I've done with writers here in Nashville, um, either on Zoom or in person. So, I mean, there are tons of songs. I, I feel like a message that I often um, lean towards in writing is, I mean, Gone My Way is a perfect example. Um, a lot of it is just about, you know, being yourself because life's too short uh, to be somebody that you're not and kind of doing your own thing and doing what makes you happy regardless of the opinions of um, other people. So that's, you can find that in a lot of my music, but it depends. I like that. I agree with that. You know, going your own way, going the, to the own beat of your own drum. I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. What a, um, so you're 17 years old. You're, you're a junior in high school. What do your friends think about your looping skills and, and your songs in general? So I actually, I turned 18 about a week and a half ago, and I am okay. going to senior year of high school. Um, thank God I'm ready to be out. I'm ready to be done with Happy that. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so it's interesting because a lot of people at my school, um, know that I do the music thing, but, um, I mean, I don't really talk about it that much. I like to keep my friend life somewhat separate from my music life because I mean the reason one of the main reasons I go to in-person school rather than fully online just to knock it out um, is so you know for those social connections and just your typical high school life um, so my good friends think it's cool and they support me and it's amazing um, but most of the time it's kind of separate if that makes sense I think that's really healthy, though, to keep your personal life and your professional life separate, you know, so you can always have uh, another doorway to go to if things start to getting a little stressful in the music industry. You have your friends to take you back down to the level. And yeah, I, I agree with that. I for agree sure. With that. So you're what, what's, what's next for you um, as an artist? What do you where, where do you want to take this? Where do you want to take looping? I love this question because first I thought it was just going to be what's next in general um, because I am also still a side man. So, you know, I've got tours coming up as a side musician um, artist wise. I'm really excited. I've been um, working up recording new music that I want to release very, very soon, um, hopefully sometime in the fall. And I've also worked up a one woman band show that's more condensed than what you would see on AGT um, that I really hope I can start, you know, getting some opening slots for rock bands or something along those lines. I want to play live and I want to release new music. And I'm guessing I'll be releasing new music forever because there's plenty of it to go around. So, I, Hey, you're not, you're not lying. You're not lying. You said uh, you're going to go on some tours. What tours are you going on? So it's, Tours are tough uh, with with COVID and um, when they're not set in stone. I mean, tours and things like that fall apart so easily in this industry. Um, but I might possibly be touring the UK with a Nashville songwriter, Beth Nielsen Chapman. Um, and I'm super excited for that. That would be um, later in the fall, um, which would also make me miss more school, which I'm totally cool with that. So I'll, I'll take it. But um, and some other little things, but I can't say anything because a lot of the times it doesn't happen. So understandable. That's understandable. And so your song during your audition, it was more of a pop song. Is that the direction that you want to go to? Or is there a little country you want to dabble in? What's the genre that you're looking for? I like to call my genre of music I like to call it bubble grunge because yeah I mean some of it's pop some of it's rock you know mix of the of both of them um I'm probably not gonna dabble much in country music although I play country music as a sideman all the time um 
when it comes to writing my own stuff, I just don't really lean towards that. Um, but I've also been really trying to get away from genre talk um, in the studio because I'd rather just focus on writing songs that I love and that are fun. So I'm not always trying to force all of my music, like force a genre upon it. I'd rather kind of let the song itself pick its genre through the ways that I build it from the ground up. So I love that question, but I don't really know about genres per se. So completely understand, completely understand. So speaking of genres, who are some of your favorite artists that you listen to and look up to? So I think um, the band that has inspired me the most because I've been raised on them and they, I mean, they never get old, they're timeless, are the Beatles. I know it's pretty a pretty basic answer, but they're amazing and they've influenced almost every single band that influences me that came after them. Uh, so I just, I feel like all my roots really go back to that. Uh, but I also love Fountains of Wayne. They wrote Stacy's Mom has got it going on. That, yeah, they wrote yes. that. A bunch yeah. of other really good music. I feel like no one, no one that I've talked to really has, uh, like dove into any other music of theirs, but it's really great songwriting. And I also want to be the female version of Dave Grohl. He is a multi-instrumentalist. If you didn't know, recorded a couple of the Foo Fighters albums, all him. And I read his book. He's just a great guy and makes really good music and plays everything. So, yeah. It's, it's going to happen. We're putting it into existence right now, Mia. It's going to happen. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> well, Mia, it was great talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I cannot wait to see more of you on AGT. Any final words for your fans? Um, well, I mean, I've been getting a lot of support um, before and since my audition, and I just appreciate it so much. Um, making music is a reward within itself, but the people that really support you and, you know, tell you to keep going and that they love your stuff. It makes it that much more rewarding. So, I mean, just a big thank you to everyone and thank you to you for having me. Uh, this was really fun and it was nice awesome. to meet you. So. Awesome. Awesome. And can you tell your fans where they can find you on social media? Absolutely. I'll tell you all day. Uh, <laughs> Mia Morris Music, that's where you can find me. Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Facebook is all pretty much Mia Morris Music. But YouTube is Mia Morris. That's probably my favorite platform. And I post vlogs, original music, um, all my artist stuff. And I've been posting on YouTube since I was nine years old. So you can, it's like my whole life on screen if you really want to get into it that much. But, and, oh my God, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you can stream music is just Mia Morris. Please stream my music. It makes a big difference. So. Well, yeah. you all heard it here. Stream her music, <laughs> follow her. This girl is a true talent. Thank you again, Mia. My name is Benny Adams. You can find me on all social media at Benny J Adams. And make sure you guys like and subscribe to this channel so you can see more content about all the AGT contestants. And I will see you guys later.